um, we will start with general public comments. And Deb, oh, are you here for general public comments? I am. Comment? I am here for public comment. Hi, everybody. Thanks for everything you do. Um, it was brought to my attention that there are some problems with uh, the rental properties uh, that are owned by Frank Piazza. And I'm concerned. I'm concerned for the tenants there, um, that the building isn't safe. I'm really, I've been in touch with Dick Valentinetti, and he's terrific as the health officer. Um, and I understand you guys got this letter, uh, or a copy of this letter. Is that the one that Dick sent out? That he yeah. sent. And so Frank apparently has until the 27th of this month, somewhere around there, to respond to some of these concerns. Um, it's, see, I understand that the property that the house that he owns is now for sale, and it doesn't have, the term that was used was cistern. I looked it up, I'm thinking, is that septic? Is that drinking water? Um, whatever, there's an issue with the house that isn't going to be fixed before it's sold. Um, I, I guess my concern is, I. I'm hoping that the select board is aware and on top of this, and that we as a town support improvements to the building and however that can happen. And if Frank, uh, if the owner, whoever it would be in this situation, isn't in compliance, that we're willing to move forward uh, to take action to make sure it is. Uh, if the building comes into compliance with current health standards, with current safety standards, I mean, it's a rent, these are rental units in a time that rentals are, I don't have to tell you, I mean, beyond difficult, right? These are people who are coming to Moortown. We want our town to uh, be a town that, uh, that is a welcoming place, that is a safe place, that is a place that people want to move to. We've been talking about that for years too. And I think that our rental units being in compliance on all levels is indicative of the attitude of the town select board and the people. So I'm here to uh, lend my support to say that I will be back because I want uh, to know that whatever needs to be done to bring these buildings into compliance so that they are safe for rental units is being done and supported by the select board and we're not dragging our feet on this because it's not new news, right? I mean, we all know, know. And so it's time because there are grants out there. There is the will out there to bring rental units to bring buildings into compliance. And this is the time, and this is the time for us as a town to say, yes, we support this, even more than after I rain. And I know it's difficult because I dealt with that building during Irene and after Irene as zoning administrator. So I'm not saying this is easy stuff. This is our time, that's all. And I wanna say I support it, I support you, Dick Valentinetti has been great, um, that I plan on staying informed on this and to lend my support and be there. So that's what I wanted to say. Are you talking about the house down there by Hurdle Road or the apartments in this I'm talking, oh. well, I'm talking about both. The apartments okay. are, see, we don't want to talk about what really could happen with those apartments because we don't want to put people out at this time when housing is so difficult. So how can we support the property owner in coming into compliance? And if there's not a will there to do it, what recourse do we have to make it happen? Because Moortown is an outstanding place to live and be, and that's what we want all of our buildings to show. That's what we're doing with the town hall, right? 
and the library, and we want to do it in all the buildings in town. Well said. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, you for yeah, listening. You, and really, thank you guys yeah. for all that you do. Sure. I'll be back. Thank you. Yeah, I didn't know Nicole was Yeah, but you should say from there. Uh, I'm not saying you won't. Oh. I'm just saying I didn't know. That was just me, Todd. Okay. Yes, you're up yes. next. You're your next roll on up. I'll roll on up. <laughs> and if you could state who you are. Yes, my name is Nicole Malone, and I actually live in the building. Of the I'm sorry, Nicole. What? I can take Mal last. Malone. Malone. And the LRM. Um, so I've been a resident for almost two years. I've been living at 1013, um, and I've been working almost this whole time to ensure that the buildings maintain that our rent was going towards, you know, upkeeping mm -hmm. our living situation. There's seven of us living there. All of us are facing near pandemical conditions. We're being retaliated against with threats of eviction, of intimidation, of you know nothing being done. I I would just want to be part of this conversation, and I've been in touch with Dick, who's been wonderful, but also we've been dealing with this for over a year. I've spent a lot of time, you know, reaching out to Vermont Legal Aid, to Vermont Emergency Rental Assistance Programs, and so on and so forth forth, but we're only so resourced to do these things on our own, especially when dealing with someone who will not communicate. You know, we've reached out to mediators and really trying to do what we can. We've tried to make our own repairs, yet we can't access um, funds to do so from BRAP because he pretty much stands in the way. We aren't getting our rental rebates because he denied renting to us. He's affected our credit score. He, I mean, people are getting injured, they're falling through porches, our roofs are leaking, there's infestations, and I mean, the list goes on and on. So I just want to invite you to include me in this conversation. We've been doing a lot of work trying to communicate and work on a mutually beneficial outcome where, you know, the building is in good standing order, the tenants are doing their part, and the landlord is also doing his part. Um, I think that's pretty much... I'll feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions. We've been keeping a pretty good record of what's going on there. Um, but yeah, we all work in the town. We're teachers, we're librarians, we're you know postmen. So we really would like to stay here because if if the building becomes condemned, we're all out of a home, and I don't know where we'll go. Sure, well, we'd certainly um, like you to stay here. Thank you. Um. All right, that's all. Thanks so much for your time. And I really didn't know Nicole was coming to <laughs> no. I decided last night. <laughs> well, we, Thank you for having me. So um, <laughs> it's really right now in Frank's, uh, not Frank's, in uh, our, our health inspector and also the town lawyer. I mean, it's a, right. of what we can do. So we pass it on to him mm -hmm. just to make sure whatever we can do as a town, and we are limited somewhat. Mm -hmm. um, Whatever, whatever we can do, we are willing to do to bring those places up to, you know, livable places okay. that are reasonable to rent. So. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Gentlemen, uh, welcome. We have, well, actually, we have one more thing before you. And uh, we're setting the tax rates, so it's not that fun. <laughs> <laughs> But then we'll be right back. Yeah. Charlene. No. Just make sure this one went on here. Let me get on there. Let me see what it looks to be. Okay, Charlene. So I sent emails to all well, this tax rate last week. I'm not sure if you have a chance to look at the weekend to look at it or not. But um, there's a couple of different options that we can go with. Um, if we go with this standard option that we normally do with tax and Increase will be 14 cents. If you decide that you want to use some urban funds for lost revenue, which is allowed, it will go to point, uh, 51 cents. 10 cents increase. Yes, instead of 14. So my, uh, my question, Joan, is the deficit that you are showing here is only from the end of the year last year, it does not reflect uh, the budget overruns we've had already this year with with uh, increased gravel and fuel prices, right? Correct. So this, I, I think we're probably 
thirty thousand dollars over our budget now. I'm just stabbing at that. Let's say we're thirty thousand dollars over. I think it's it's almost. Uh, I almost feel like we should increase this thirty-five thousand to cover the debt that we are already over this year. I don't think we can do that. You can't do that. No, I have. You can only put what was voted on by the voters. Okay. But you can't use ARPA funds for lost revenue. So at the end of the year, we're $30,000 over budget. We okay. can use ARPA funds for that. So it's something to consider that we are going yeah. right. to do. Okay. Yeah. All right. That, that was my other question. Sherwin, is there anything else that I mean, sticks out to you here? It, I just wanted to point out that the the major reasons for this was obviously the budget increase. Um, whole farm was current use. A lot of people pulled out this year, so the 60000 that's about almost $15,000 difference. Um, those are really the two items that have put up the uh, 14 cents. And the grandless value also did not go up very much this year either. Which is kind of surprising. Yeah, yeah, yeah it is. We get the concern what the price, the property he's on it for. Well, that won't, you won't see that change until, yeah. the, until the reappraisal is done. We didn't have as many houses. That were built this year, like when H and H was building their houses over in Gallagher Acres. Right. We had house after house going up, so that's why we saw the large increase in the previous years. Right. But this year, the building did not happen as well. The other um, source of revenue that I've looked into, and I haven't got an answer back from Ron, is we have approximately one hundred. Five thousand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I looked. It was. Yeah. Right here. Eight hundred thirty-one thousand four ninety-seven, and that was. Um, remember, we had the money that we put away for uh, Green Mountain Power. Oh, okay. Um, and there still hasn't been any action on that, so I've contacted Ron to see if, at this point, there's a statue of war um, because there hasn't been any um, return of any of the, the, the times we've tried to uh, reach out uh, whether we can use that money um, so that's just sitting there so um, what I'm thinking is we look at everything here tonight and then um, probably make a decision on the, on the uh, tax rate um, let me get an answer from Ron and then we can just meet uh, through Zoom in the next, by the end of the week, we'll put a cap on it so that we can get this thing out. Um, we'll give us a couple of days, we'd be all right with that, Sherwin. Yeah. Perhaps look for 131,000. Um, just not Friday. Oops. All right. Unless you want to do it without me. <laughs> <laughs> no, we could do it Thursday. Um, I think it'll be fairly quick. So why don't we go ahead and just continue to discuss what we want to do, but there's that other possibility of that revenue as well. The only thing that okay. we have going on is Thursday <coughs> would be in the morning because we have a strong lot of people off meeting. 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock. So eight it's as long as it's not in 8 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, they're going to do it at 745 would be the, the two minute um, thing where we just accept the uh, um, That meeting is live here, all right? I mean, yeah, yeah. Right on Thursday is yeah. live. Yeah. Yeah. So it might be hard to zoom. All right, well, let's live here. There's enough you can Yeah, yeah then we're all set. Then we're all set. Anyways. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be great. All right. Take care of that. Um, because I really hesitate to go out with, you know, you know I would sort of like to bring this tax rate down. Um, yeah. Get a little mm -hmm. bit closer to where we were. I just trying to see what everyone voted on the, the budget to increase it. Um, you know, we're for $1,210,000 to $1,366,000. Mm -hmm. um, articles went out from 48 to 61, so there's not so many people that voted on, but I would still like to hopefully get an answer on that before we uh, 
make a final determination on the, the tax rate. I do have comparisons from previous years if you're interested in that or not. But um, in 2018, it went down nine cents. So it, it kind of, it's been, that was a big drop. I don't know if you, in 2016, it was like a, a huge drop in there too. So you can see where it's kind of going up and down. Yeah, it's good. It fluctuates with a number of different things. Mm -hmm. Whatever's out there, I think, um, really, what really drives it, it's, it's not our municipal budget that's driving it at all. It's, it's the school. Um, and when there's, I mean, ours is, it's going up, but look where it's coming from. It's not the municipal rate. Right. It's the, yeah, the municipal rate is very, very low, yeah. but it's the school that she had really no um, say at this point. So, um, but on our, if we can add more revenue to it, we can um, help with that. But Cheryl, I do want to thank you. Um, I was sorry to put this uh, together and have it all the back up where everything came from. Yep. Um, makes it easy uh, to know. And then certainly when we have questions, because uh, once we get this out here next week, that you'll have questions, I'm certain. And you'll know where to uh, keep them. So I suggest you keep this little packet that this shirt will put together. And so we'll get together on that. Uh, Thursday. That's okay. right. Yeah. Don, okay. uh, John, mm -hmm. uh, any questions for you folks? No. Nope. We'll, we'll, we'll zoom in on Thursday. Is that what you're thinking? Or we'll... Yeah. Uh, I think a combination of both. Okay. Um, because a couple of people are going to be here anyways, and so we do, and we have to have someone has to be here. So. Uh, We'll do it both, you know, a combination. So that way, if you're at work um, or Don, if you're still in bed. Yeah, I don't think I can do that. I don't think I can make it down here. We can, we can do that. Is that right? Yeah. All right, anyone? Yeah. So, do you have a question from Ed and Bob? Thank you, Cheryl. Thank, Thank you, Cheryl, very much. John, let's roll on up if you want. Yeah. Thank you for coming. I'm uh, Tom Martin. I'm the chair of the board. Guys, uh, what's your name? Maria Washburn. Sally Streeter. Okay. John Wexler. John Hogan-Bold. Remember John and Gwyneth? Yeah. <laughs> for those of you that don't know me, Sam Hill, Brett Meyer. That's all right. A bit of a stat sheet, basically, of what we've done in the last three years. Obviously, we haven't had a contract. I just want to show you guys have something to look at here. Is it one sheet? Just one sheet, yep. Yeah. This is oh, just when yeah. you're cruising through the area. Basically. Correct, as well as uh, we've been doing some different highway safety details when we're in the area as well. And some packing stations trying to get Yep. Uh, <coughs> Sorry, gentlemen, just someone turning it on the line here. I tend to look that off. <coughs> yep, she is. It's coming on. Yeah, she's on now. Okay. All right, go ahead, John. Okay. So we're we're here at your request. So well, again, uh, so this was something that again you've done, and uh, I'm sorry I got distracted there for a second. Uh, as you're going through town or just doing that as well, some highway safety details. I've only been in the area. Um, not a whole lot of activity. Part of it was obviously during COVID. Um, as well, we lost a full time patrolman back in last August of 2020. We've actually hired one gentleman back on. Oh, 21. Thank you. Um, and just hired another gentleman back on. It's now filling us back in to, we're back to hopefully being able to do some things. and and boost up our patrol contracts in the area. So yeah, the hard part for us as well as all other law enforcement is when I came to the department 18 years ago, we had approximately 15 patrol deputies. Yeah. And now we have about five. Uh -huh. um, it's hard to get people to want to do the work. 
um, the training to become a part-time certified or level two, which is called now, um, is super hard for anybody that has a, a full-time job. So it's really limited us on, on finding those reserve <coughs> officers, reserve deputies that used to fill a lot of our patrols. So we have changed things up where when I first started, our uh, civil process guys didn't really do much of anything for first patrol. And now our two civil process people um, fill in and do some patrol. We have a full-time uh, deputy that does patrol. Um, Brett, on his days off, does do some patrol. Um, our other state deputy, on his days off, does some highway safety stuff and occasionally does some patrol. So we've got, and then we've got two other part-timers that will fill in and do a little patrol now and then. So we're, we're trying to piece it together as much as we can to try and get out um, with the contract times that we have, try and fill whatever needs we can. Um, how many hours <coughs> do you have now a bill? Roughly a week. Uh, we might have it's three to four, right. maybe a week. We might be able to do a shift. As far as, for, oh, as far as how many hours for you guys? Right. Yeah. Anywhere from four to five hours a week. I may be able to some weeks do twice that amount, depending on because what my intentions probably would be is that people that work in the valley, as either they would catch coming out or catch coming back in, and we can kind of work it together and, and make it so it actually works out for one. One time you may pay the mileage going out, but the next day you may not, depending on which will right. help you guys in some ways. But as well, it kind of does a joint area as well. Um, so it gives me the ability to schedule things a little bit better and organizing, like I said, by putting them either in Wastefield Warren area to start with and then just coming back into town on the way back through. Um, it just makes it for a full day of patrol for them. And nights, just so you know, nights and weekends, are extremely hard because we're so short staffed and we don't have the staff that's available to work the nights and weekends that, like we used to have. And again, I have the full time patrolman that I, that I can work in to be able to do some of the weekend stuff. Again, generally what I, I would do again is, is work in the valley area, they'd probably come in from the valley or, or vice versa and be able to work some of that out as well. But you need another, you need to hire another person. I, well, we, we would like we, to. We, we would like to. The problem is, is even, you know, we, we knew that with your new budget, or you voted in $20,000 for, for patrol. For 20, even if you gave us the full $20,000, we couldn't hire yeah. a full time deputy. So we uh, currently, we're, we run into the same problem that we had for the last 18 years, and we were just talking about it again, is during the summer with con road construction projects, we can, we can fill for about eight months, but then what do we do with the other person for the other four months over the winter? Um, so we're, we've been trying really hard. Unfortunately, since we met with you last, which was uh, many years ago, um, we even had to give up our court contracts, which provided several patrol people uh, part-time nights and weekends after they got done working in court because we just couldn't staff it. Just didn't have the people. So we lost five positions that we had that were full-time positions in the court. And it's not, it's not just an us issue, it's yeah. all law enforcement in general and right. everybody's setting. For one thing that we used to do as well as some of the guys who work full time for other departments who come work for us part time, those guys are working overtime. It's totally it's right. beyond in their own departments, where mm -hmm. to the point that they don't want to work on law enforcement anymore, <laughs> period. Yeah. It's getting to be, uh, so it's getting really tough finding help, period, to do any of it. So we just want to be really realistic yeah. with you yeah. of what, what the expectations are um, that, uh, that what we can, we're able to provide. Um, the other thing that we always like to do is we like, if, if you want, decide you want to contract with us, is you, people that have been here in the past know we like to have a contact person so that if complaints come through, uh, the one contact person uh, gets in touch with normally it would be Brett currently to let them know so we can organize the patrols for the certain areas and certain times or um, if you have a certain vehicle that you're dealing with that you get a lot of complaints with. Because what has happened in the past when we had it limited to one person is we had you call us and say to go this part of town and you call us and say to go this part of town and we're pulling our hair out because we're always in the wrong place. Or the more we feel that things are going great, the next thing I know I get John calling saying I need you to come to our meeting. 
get here and we get this, boom, this is all that's happening. Well, if we'd known about it when it was happening, we could deal with it. Yeah. Now, six months later, and, and we've dealt with this before with different contracts, but if we can just get a... No, we need to have good communication in place. Yes. I mean, that's the key. Yeah. Is, and, you know, know. By email or give me a phone call, whatever way, is, it works so well. And any, any information, the time of day it's happening, and what day of the week it's happening, works out very well. Right. I don't want to schedule somebody at 7 o'clock in the morning when it's happening at 5 o'clock at night. Right. I think our, our best communication right now is with Warren, where Cindy will text me or email me, sorry, and say, hey, could you spend you know, some time in the next couple of days on Main Street because this is our problem, and immediately. Sometimes it's that day we have a person out there, and we can just, I can email them or call them and say, hey, this is the current problem today, and we can take care of it. So we like the immediate response of what's going on so we can try and deal with it immediately. But through one person. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It, it gets so convoluted, we found, if it's not. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's that's and that's good to hear that you're welcome to uh, those type of calls or communication and reaction. I, I don't take it as whining or complaining. I take it as it's the information we need. Yeah. We, we want to deal with the issue that's happening for you guys. We don't want to just be out here. I don't say wasting money. Obviously, being here is exposure to the area and they're seeing a cruiser, but much rather be dealing with the actual issue. And, and we were just having a conversation myself and a couple of different people in the last couple of days over law enforcement gets a bad rap because we don't we don't solve enough crime, we're not in the right place at the right time. Well nobody wants to be a witness and nobody wants to talk to us about what's going on. So if we don't have that teamwork, that partnership, uh, then we can't we can't be really effective. So we, we encourage the partnership. Um, again just to refresh people that are, are new or may have forgotten. The contracts that we take are primarily <coughs> patrol contracts for motor vehicle patrol. Um, we don't have the staffing and we don't have the money to, to be able for us to come out and take your burglaries, take um, you know, your retail thefts. We are a first responder if we're in the area. If the state police gets a call, it's a serious call, we will definitely respond to be a force multiplier and, and quite often we can be there first. If they're busy, we will handle things in your area until they can get here or we can turn it over. Uh, but we uh, do very well working hand in hand with the state police to try and help cover everything um, as best as we all can because we're all shorthanded. I so suspect that will actually increase a little bit. <coughs> the state police barracks moving to Berlin. Right. I've got additional response time now. So, yeah, right. I'm working on the valley. Probably going to be spending a fair amount of time in the area uh, yeah. being a first responder as well. So. Mm. All right. <laughs> um, so do you have a, a copy of your contracts? Yeah, we talked about that. I've been on vacation for the last week. We came in, I've been playing catch up all day. We were trying to catch up on what time we had to be here and we'll have to marry the money okay. and then you can look at it. I, I can't even tell you, I, I think the patrol weight is somewhere in the mid thirties plus mileage at this point. <coughs> Well, I think we're, we're really interested in doing something. We um, spoke to Lieutenant White as well. Uh, they are so short staffed, they can't mm -hmm. afford to put anyone uh, or, or do anything. Um, so uh, we'd certainly like to, you know, I think do something. We have a little money in the budget. Like I said, it's not a lot, but uh, we want to kind of dip our toe in and see what, what happens with it and uh, what type of response we get. So if we get it, uh, send that contract when you can, we'll, we'll take a look at it. And I think probably at our next meeting, we could um, approve something if we felt yeah. and then uh, you know, we'd let you know uh, if we had any questions at that point. And yeah. either actually to come in or maybe jump on Zoom or something. And, uh, and, and our contracts have been pretty straightforward, pretty much probably is going to be the same as what you've seen before. Um, for the most part, we have really good <coughs> work for us and they work for the communities. Um, and uh, again, we're here to try and be a partner with you. We can't be everything to everybody, but we try and help everybody we can. Right, no, we understand that. And what we're really going at this point, kind of your belly with is, is the motor vehicle um, mm -hmm. stuff that's going on. We have a lot of speeding, whether it's through town or Pony Farm or the Common Road, 
Same place it's all. Yeah, yeah. 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 all over the place. Yeah. 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 Mount Road, yeah. Jonesport. Yeah. So, last one I remember, 66 and, and a 30 right here by the Highway Department on my way back in yeah. about midnight. Wow. One night coming back to town. Wow. Yep. He, he was hammering. He actually was accelerating instead of slowing down. Uh-huh. Yeah, so there's a lot of that <laughs> stuff. So, but, but, um, but in that, when we do some something, right, it mm-hmm. would still be better if we can sometimes be more specific about, you know, if you're going to give us so many hours in a week, what we would want, you know, correct. where we would want. That's correct. So, yeah. so historically, for a multitude of reasons, we won't give you a, a schedule. Um, the element of surprise for everybody is so much better because if you know you might just say it, tell a friend, hey, you know, we've contracted the sheriff's department and they're gonna be on Pony Farm Road this Thursday. So nothing happens when we're out there. So we show up, we do our thing, we bill you, the next week it's gonna be on a different day, mm-hmm. a different time frame, unless we hear from you that at 8.30 in the morning, we're having a problem on Common Road. Okay, well, we were gonna go to wherever else and we'll just redirect and we can do that. Right, yeah, we just, I think that's what we're looking for. We just wanna be able to have that input if we're having, you know, we don't expect to micromanage you at all. <clears throat> Again, I wanna know, I, I wanna right. know where the problems are. We can address those issues. Time of day it's happening. What time is it happening? If you've got vehicle descriptions so we can deal with a single out of vehicle, whether, whether people like to hear that or not. If I know it's Johnny Jones, I want to deal with Johnny Jones. Yeah. I, want to stop, I want to stop him, get him stopped from doing what it is, because unfortunately, most of the time, and I can remember a meeting coming, coming to a meeting here, in a location to park, et cetera, and all these vehicles are doing this, and I happened to be the guy that complained and told me where to park that I got. <laughs> Late getting home. Yeah. So that happens. <laughs> but you know, there that's, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for that information so I can address the issue when it's actually happening. And we, and we really haven't had the problem here in the past, but we have had in nearby communities where the select board would suggest that this push person shouldn't be stopped, or maybe we should take back this t- ticket because it's a friend of the family. And that's that's not how we operate. So we'll bring in the contract and say, I want you here during these hours because I don't want you getting my people. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, yeah, the, uh, sorry, but that was a neighboring town. <laughs> the, the other thing that we've had problems with a couple of times is that our contract is fairly generic that we provide law enforcement services because if we, we have to, to do what we're doing, and if we come on to something, we have to do the law enforcement services to deal with it. Uh, but I had one town very upset with me because um, one of the select board members on a Saturday was reviewing all the co- upcoming contracts. Ours was on her kitchen table and she had a, someone call and say, I think a drunk driver just drove by my house. So she grabbed her contract, said, yeah, they handled that. Spent two hours trying to get in touch with somebody. On Saturday, you're not gonna get anybody. And then on Monday called me really mad that we didn't have anybody available. And I said, well, number one, that's, we don't come out on a response like that, because this is what it would look like. It's gonna take us an hour to find a deputy if we can. They're gonna to have to drive to the office, get a cruise and drive out here. So it's three hours after that drunk driver's gone by. Call the state police. Let them know so that they can put it on a BOL so that everybody can be looking for that person so that we're all working together on it um, and not waiting for us to have a contract with to try and make some miraculous drive because by the time those calls were made, where was that drunk driver? Yeah. Yeah. So it's not cost effective right. for us to come out and drive around in circles looking for that. And, and just to hit on some of the stuff like burglaries we were talking about, domestic abuse, those type of cases. First responders, yes. As far as the follow-up, the actual arrest and all that, just let's just talk $20,000. If I got to drive from here to go to say, St. Albans or Newport to follow up and do an investigation, Spend half a day or a day up there. How much money did I just spend of yours that I could be doing patrol when that yep. should be a state police issue? So that's why we don't handle those type of things. I'm not saying that we don't get information passed on to state police. That happens very frequent. It's very common for us to uh, come upon information and, and pass it on to different issues. We very, work very closely with state police on those type of issues, as well as very street crimes. We work with them quite often. 
So we're involved in these different activities. It's just because your problems are the same. People are causing problems in Barry and Montpelier and yeah. everywhere else. And, and you know, these guys better than me know all the players. We transport a lot of the players, so they're able to put the pieces together and contact. So yeah. I think it, does anyone have any questions? I mean, what their role would be here? It's it's a role of patrolling for for traffic mm -hmm. and. Certainly, if they saw something going on, they would okay. step out or stop it, but yes. they are not for um, acute problems that just happen and, like that. There. And as we, I'm not sure if we really hit on it, no different than if we're on patrol in the valley and something's happening here, we're going to be a first responder. If we're here and there's something happening in Waitsfield, we're going to be a first responder to there. So maybe your day today and maybe Waitsfield's day right. tomorrow, just so you're aware of that. <clears throat> yeah, that's just something to change. that you do. Yeah. And, um, you know, you'll now when we get a monthly report or we how do you or build on hours? He generally, he generally does. He, I usually do. Usually, because of the amount of hours, there's there's not really enough to generate any interest. Yep. Um, so normally, I do a yearly report for your pound report that will tell overall what we're doing and then all the stats from the year. Or if something, you have a, something in this form or something like that. It's a little bit similar. Tell you all the numbers and, yeah. and everything. I, I will say, if it's something we get going and, and you want some stats going, call at me. All right, someone yeah, just yeah. call and ask yeah. a question. We can reach yeah. out. Yeah, yeah. 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 if someone's yeah. concerned, you know, we're not doing X, Y, and Z, and you want to see our stats, we can easily provide right. the warnings, traffic stops, warning violations that we've written. Yeah. And a criminal arrest, I'll add those on there. It, I mean, pretty simple to do this. Yep, no problem. That's, that's good. And, and just so you know, you may or may not know, um, Brett and I are getting done the end of January. Um, the, the guy that is running to replace me that's unopposed worked for us for 14 years, Mark Poulin. So the philosophy I don't believe is going to change at all come the first of the year. Okay. I know his direction is more headed toward patrol. It's whether or not the dollar figure is going to allow for it. I'll, I'll be open and honest with you. We, we've talked quite a bit about it. Um, He's got more of a direction and what Lamoille County does and, and taking on the different patrol contracts and making them not full service, but more of a direction that way, but money may not be there. <laughs> I, I have followed in the, uh, the footsteps of my predecessors that have always given, you are the lowest rate we charge. Yeah. And every other sheriff's department charges a, a much higher rate and sometimes their highest rate because of the potential of what we can get into and to be able to hire the people and pay the benefits and everything. So we've always done patrol almost as a public service. Um, so you're getting you're getting the best deal from the sheriff's department. And we're actually we're working on the dollar figures today and we're just over ninety thousand probably to outfit two car cruisers this year. We only have the, we don't have the price of the actual price for the cruiser yet. We're just trying to figure out where we're gonna be and we're gonna be about nine thousand plus this year to outfit two cruisers. And that's not the same camera system if we have to go that way. You can even get them, it'll be two years before you get them. It's going to be the other route. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, two of the, well, not the newest ones, it'll be last year's newest ones are spending more time at Ford than they are at our wow. office. So, uh, <laughs> you know we you know, have $20,000 in our budget. Right? Yes. And you're, you're, you're no way you're going to obtain that amount. Do you have any, you must have a rough idea of what you, Dollar amount you think you can do this year? Is it ten or? Well, if we averaged, I, I apologize for not having the, the figure, but if we averaged five five hours a week times thirty five dollars an hour, and say we put uh, fifteen dollars for mileage in that, so thirty five times five is what five hundred and sixty hundred sixty five plus say fifteen or twenty for mileage, so that's Say 150, 180 bucks a week times even 10 weeks, that's $1,800. So we're not going to come close to it. We're not going to come anywhere near close to it. Depending on what happens with the new sheriff and what he's able to organize, will you be able to increase the budget? Maybe. Uh, don't make any promises. And, and we don't want to promise any, anything that we can't And, and we, we may be able to do more. It all depends. Right. We just don't want to promise you. 10 hours a week right. and only be able to provide three. 
um, in some weeks because of the way we Brett does the schedule. I'm gonna say we because it's the global week. Yeah. But we work as a team. There's some weeks to mix it up that you may get two patrols, one in the morning and one in the afternoon, just to throw people off because they expect. You know, you don't want them to expect that every Thursday afternoon that's when the sheriffs are going to be out mm -hmm. here. You know, you want a Monday afternoon, a Wednesday morning, a Friday afternoon. We mix it up. And like I said, so there, like there is the issues on the weekend by all means. Mm -hmm. um, we do have contracts, for example, in Roxbury. Their big one is, is Sunday afternoons when everybody's leaving the valley headed back over the mountain. Sure. So mm -hmm. I organize contracts. I organize the contracts so that the guys generally work in the valley bump over the hill and they'll work the, uh, the Roxbury contract and end it out at the end of the day. So those are things that we do. Um, so as you, you're thinking through the process, if that's an issue, uh, if we end up with skiers again, <laughs> um, unfortunately that's been a real downfall. We're not seeing the traffic we used to see years ago. But here or there, if we start seeing that traffic again, you might see issues in the valley. I, issues here on 100 e or on 100 for that matter. And as you know, lately we've been getting the traffic at the beginning of the weekend and the at the end of the weekend because they're all staying up on the hill. Yeah. They're not coming <clears> down <throat> off. So. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the Friday night traffic, we're not seeing it now. Let's well, come in Saturday mornings. And also Thursday night. Yeah. 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 It's crazy on Thursday yeah. nights. No, it's good to yeah. know. Yeah. <clears throat> and I just one last from sure. going back to the top of the conversation, just would it would it uh in the going into the future, you know, because you mentioned twenty thousand from one town doesn't really you can't doesn't hire one guy, but if all the valley towns said pull together mm -hmm. and pull their resources of money in their budgets, would that make so, any sense that it would maybe have the funds to bring so another have, guy on? Have, we have talked about that, and all that does at this point is is shift a little bit because then some of the smaller contracts we may not be able to fill as much. Be, and we have we have done um, several times. I've done for Bat Moortown was involved years ago, Waitsfield and Warren. We even had Stowe come in, another ski town in the state lease, and we all talked about stats and we talked about numbers. And if you start thinking you want to get into something that's 24-7 and full-time patrol, dispatch alone is going to cost this community $250,000 to $275,000. Yeah. Um, the coverage for manpower is going to be a million to a million and a quarter. So you're looking at easily a million five to cover Waitsfield, Warren, and yeah. uh, Moortown for 24-7 coverage. Yeah. So with that said, right now you talk about what, what you are talking about. We have a joint contract with Waitsfield and Warren. That is, both have 16 hours, one 16 hours during the day, the other 16 hours at night. Uh -huh. And then Warren tosses in another for eight hours just in Warren. So that's one of the larger contracts. There's been a lot of discussion about face thing jumping on. Hasn't happened yet because they get free service by Emergency response, guess who's going? We're right there. Right, you're right so in town. They, they have not contracted with <laughs> us yet, but that is one. Um, there is discussion, it's back on, on the ball right now with uh, Cabot, uh, Marshfield, and Plainfield, where they're going to do a joint contract in the future. That's looking so that, okay, it may be an eight hour day, but it'd be an eight hour day covering three towns. Right. So those, yeah, things, are headed, right. yeah, those things are headed that way. Whether or not that's something that you guys want to work with, with the town of Waitsfield and Warren and do it jointly with Faceton and come up with a dollar figure, that may be beneficial as I think Waitsfield now is 20,000. I think Warren's 33, I'd have to look, but if you're looking at 20 to add into there, those figures may be getting more. Yeah. You know, and it may not happen now. We do have a guy right now that might be interested in coming on, but we just can't support him full time. He has a full time job, but you know, after the first of the year, things could change. The next budget season, things could change for for everybody. Um, yeah. As far as organizing it, that's something that yeah. definitely yeah, yeah, discuss yeah. with the towns because covering three towns instead of just two, we spread it out a little bit. Covers a lot of different areas. Okay, we've got a complaint going on now. We can deal with it, but we're also covering the other areas, and it's. They see a cruiser in all three towns, not just two. That's just the way it works. That, that really throws people when they'll see somebody at eight o'clock here. They think they're free. You know, to go to Waitsfield at ten, we're in Waitsfield. Yeah. 
Then we'll circle back around and we'll let them go back here. Okay. I have one more question. Maybe we can do that. So, uh, what is your feeling towards, uh, how do you feel about the total speed limit uh, that you can get? Like, are they a waste of time, do you think, or do you think the town should be investing in those? Towns? We had we had two when I got here, and they were uh, a huge money suck for us, and we couldn't get them repaired, so we ended up getting rid of them. Had not bought one, and they are using it. So what I will say is for us to own them, it was terrible. All the towns that have bought their own signs um, rave about them, they love it's, them. especially yeah. the ones that they can move around, move around yeah. um, because it's just a, a good reminder. I mean, all of us drive on the road, and how many times have you come onto a sign and went, oh, that's right, or seen a cruiser go by and go, oh, that's right, it's only 30 and I'm doing I think a lot of that's what So Some are data good. collecting, some are not, um, depending on which ones you get. Also, some are MUTC compliant. MUTCD compliant, some are not. Those that are not, you don't want. Because <laughs> the sign has to flash at a certain rate. Uh, the speed rate of how fast it flashes is considered MUT compliant, and the signs have to be MUT compliant. Do you have any information on that that you could share with us or Sal? Let me do some digging, and I will see. I actually can send it. I can send it. Sasha, yeah. 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 Let me do a little digging on that. But, but yeah, and we don't have them anymore because it work for us to have them. Uh, but all the towns that have them really enjoy having them. It's really done. One thing that, for that would be a benefit for us as well, and I'll just ask for it, um, not from our legal seat, uh, Regional Planning Commission puts out the tapes on different roads. <coughs> Do you feel that there are problems with speed? I would highly suggest it. I, I actually, if you do do it, I would love to have those readings. Generally, they'll do it two weeks in a given area. So it gives me time of day, speed, type of vehicle, the whole works, it gives me everything. So we do this quite often, and Warren and Willem, they have their own tapes. It is if there's problems, they put out the tapes, gives me a time of day, I set up guys on those times, those times that it's happening. Plainfield was another big one that did it. It was miraculous. And when things were happening at noon time on such and such a day, or we there at noon time on such and such a day, guess we got caught. It worked, that's good. That's it worked good. very well. Uh, I think a hundred people would be great to know because you know, who the people in question they are, who the people are, but you're going to know that they're yeah, happening at this time of, time of the day it's happening. So that's also in the, the data collection? Yes. Uh, yes. Right. They have the tapes that they do data yeah. collection, amount of vehicles, speed, time of day it's actually, and does the full graphs and everything for us. Wow. Okay. And I sit down and go through, why well, I'm crazy, but I'm crazy with the numbers, I'll go through and I'll find when these are happening. Mm -hmm. And if we have the high rate of speed, so we've got the guys running through here at 75 miles an hour every day at a certain time of day, guess who's going to be here? Right. Uh, and awesome. on the flip side of that, it saves us from working in areas that really are a problem. Because, you know, I always use my dad as the, as the example. He lives on a 35 mile an hour dirt road, and it's a straightaway, and people be coming up and goes, That guy's flying, it's, he's going 40. You know, it, it looks fast standing here as he's going by the end of the driveway, but he's going 40. So we do get those complaints, and this can alleviate some of those, so we're not spending a bunch of, of your time on a road where there's really not a problem. I say one of my complaints. I just say Route 14 in Woodbury. Yes, there's a lot of speed out by the, by the lake. I've got nonstop complaints about the MBI trucks. We have yet to get an MBI truck speeding yet. Mm -hmm. they, they look like the big road trucks. Road. They're loud. They yeah. bang on the roadway. Right. Everybody thinks they're flying because they're standing inside their house. Everyone's flying. Yeah. But yeah. 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 Exactly. So th that's what happens, and, road, and yeah. it's perception and. Nothing wrong with that. It's perception. We go out, no issues. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Right. I've got a couple of business cards, both sheriff as well as mine, whichever way. If you have any questions, by all means, get a hold of us and we can direct. If you need us at the next meeting, just give us a little bit of lead time so we are able to make it. <laughs> That's right. Uh, Thank you very much, gentlemen. Okay, Appreciate great. your time. Take and I'll, I'll right. have our bookkeeper send you out a contract so you can look it over and then let us know. Yeah. Well, we're Perfect. Glad Any questions? Absolutely. Yeah. A quick email and either give either give us a holler sometimes we're in the office, sometimes we're not. And I'll be back as soon as possible. Thanks, guys. Right. Right. Appreciate your time. Right. Right. Thanks for doing what you're doing. Yeah. Congratulations on your retirement. Well, well that's the plan. I'm running for assistant judge. Oh, really? Oh, okay. yeah. Terrific. You're just running, right? <laughs> just running. <laughs> <laughs> it's been 38 and a half years. I was going to say, Sam's been here forever.
Thanks. I see that we see that in a bad or in a half year, we're just ready for something else. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> that was good. All right, so we have the library, um, friends in the library. Hello. Hi. Hello. 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 How are you? Well, how are you? Very cool. Thanks. Oh, right. For some reason, this is not. That's it. Story lock board. And we got just more one person, one moment for Donnie. That would be great. Thank you. Sorry about that. That's right. Um, so the Friends of the Library would like to do a project to support Corey. We do supplemental work for the library. Um, and she has asked for a permanent story walk. So we have been working on this and we're here to get your blessing. Um, Carla Lewis, who is also a member of the Friends, has spoken to the Warren Library and Fletcher Free um, in researching different companies that make StoryWalk permanent installations. Um, and we've decided to go with a company called Barking Dog. And this is their product. So it would be mounted on a post at an angle. Um, and we put two pages of the story in each one of the signs. And then it can be swapped out there um, screws that you unscrew, and that way it is, the story is protected from weather and elements and things. Um, so we have spoken to the school. Um, the school actually has given us some financial support, um, but we have solicited input from the school, Friends of Eco, the Moortown PTO. I've walked a loop with the school librarian. Um, and we've also worked with the rec committee who has talked to Stefan. So we've talked about safety issues, we've talked about what route we want, um, and location with regard to making it easy to mow around them and snow removal. Accessibility. Yep. Right. Um, so we've come up with a route and we just wanted to present it to you and hear any feedback or questions you have. I've also been working with the zoning administrator who said that she believes we're exempt from needing a permit for the project. You better run our first week, so probably a good <laughs> She was very thorough. She had a lot of questions. Um, so I printed out a couple maps. I didn't do one for everyone because my poor little printer, I didn't think of sure. that much ink. Um, but the route we've discussed was going along, Oops, upside down here. <laughs> along the path here, um, the around, yep. Uh, not exactly behind the school. No, this. Can you move your water bottle down? Oh, yeah, no, you're fine. Oh. That was right in the way. So this path right. actually is really, it's the um, paved access road, and we thought there might be issues with future maintenance, and it was pretty slippery when we walked it. So we were thinking along the nature trail here, um, set off to the side, up around the tennis courts, and ending at the willow tree. We're looking at putting in 20 signs. And they're going to be mounted on? We would do wood posts. And I assume we would set them in concrete. So when we say permanent, we mean permanent. Yes. Do you have any questions? Do you think I mean, so the stories idea? change every one. Yeah, know. so our library could use it. Um, the school librarian is really enthusiastic about it. Uh, they did a big water project and we thought that they could use it for tying into that. We thought that maybe um, the mad birders might want to use it for the birding by ear that they do in the spring. You could do Mike Safety Week. The Historical Society could do something with it. So we'd open it up to a lot of different groups in the valley. So when they talk to the signs, mm -hmm. sign walk, is there other displays? Or 
things around the sign that are related to the story that typically not no. so we would have a welcome board kind of explaining the story walk um and then you have laminated sheets so you take a picture of the part kellogg hubbard is actually the founder of story walk okay. and they have a lot that they love now so you get laminated individual sheets of a picture book and so we could put them one picture here and one picture here, and then you read the story and you walk around. Kids would walk around, you know, if they're older on their own, but typically with a, for littler kids with a caregiver who reads the story as you go along. So these are set down low enough for children to read? Yes. They are typically mounted at an angle. I was actually thinking about this the other day. I'm gonna have to vary the height depending on where the path is. So they're mounted at a 45 degree angle. Okay, okay. This is glass on you? No. It's plexi, yeah. Oh, no. You can do art displays. Well, no, that no. holds up to the weather and stuff. Yep, it's, it's meant to hold up to the weather. Um, we haven't heard of any issues with them um, in terms of maintenance. Fletcher Free had some graffiti, and I think they, Carlos, and they have won yet? Remember? So, yeah. And the company took care of it right away, but it's meant to be waterproof. We actually looked into getting someone to make them, um, and he thought that given the, the quality and you know how substantial this is, that he couldn't really match it. Um, I'm just thinking five years down the road, it's no user, no one's using it. What do we do? Use them. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. I mean, how are we going to be uh, assured that these things are going to be um, maintained and, and used to their full extent? Um, I mean, we could come up with sort of a maintenance plan, but we do a story. Corey does a story walk around more fest every year. She does a few a year. I know the school does them like if there's an open house for the forest program or at the beginning of the school year. So I'm thinking right there, it's probably five or six times a year that they're already getting used. And if we have it permanent and are encouraging other groups to use it, um, you know, I think I think it's going to get used. Yes. It's, how, it's a really popular concept. How long does the story usually stay up? month or something or a couple of weeks or it varies. Yeah, like I've seen story walks like for April's poetry month. So for the whole month of April there's mm -hmm. a poetry walk. So I would think once a month would be the target. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, my only concern would be like what Tom said that the you know five years the signs start getting worn out. What mm -hmm. you know what do we do? I mean I'm sure the company you know you know what I mean it just gets beat from the weather. Right. It'd be interesting to hear from this company what 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 how what they've found with and how in long you know you know the longevity of yeah. going through you know from a winter you know it's right. freezing and snow and raining and sun and you know all that. So I know Warren just installed theirs, but we could talk to the Fletcher Free Library and to the company and find out what yeah. their suggestion is. Um, but the friends could also talk about what it looks like to replace the top plexiglass as it gets, you know, like cloudy or scratched or yeah, something. That's right. yeah. um, and and make that part of our onward mm -hmm. fundraising and, and budgeting. They also have um, um, some kind of cleaner that will buff out. Oh, okay. Plexiglass. Plexiglass. Yeah, because yeah, I know we use it on the side by side every now and then. There's a certain thing, and it just puts a, it cleans it off enough that it's not so cloudy, so you get a little bit more out of it. Now, is this also like on the path where they do eco, kind of in like the same general area? No, um, no, it, it it's along the biking path. Okay. We talked about doing it up in the woods, and that presented some challenges in terms of both accessibility and safety. You don't mm -hmm. want someone coming down and crashing into one of these. Sure. Um, 
And we talked, I actually ran into Jenny Lyle when I was walking around with um, the school librarian Nancy and you know, talked to her about bringing the public up to her base camp and she was all for it. Um, but as I said, this, this room presented some challenges in terms of um, Chris from REC thought that it might need to be maintained at some point and I walked on, on a pretty wet day and it was really slippery. So we all, um, when we met with the REC committee to do a walk around, all agreed that a flatter path was probably the better choice. I was just thinking like for longevity, like another way to to yeah. loop it in. But if the school is willing to use it and the librarian's all for it, I mean, she can work with the library and, you know, if they have something going on for a month, mm -hmm. bring kids out and do it during library time, time yeah. or incorporate it into eco time. Yeah. Did you hear from the rec committee about this? No. 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 Okay. Well, <laughs> we thought that they were going to reach out to you. Their notes... Um, from their last meeting at the end of June indicate that they fully support it. Um, it said that they worked through details with Stefan and are supportive. Um, they did say they may need to widen the trail in spots to just remove some small trees and do some living. Um, but the goal would be that we wouldn't want to do substantial changes to the trail. There's one issue of concern around the back corner of the tennis court where the, the land kind of slopes down and how slippery that might be in the winter. So they may install a handrail, but that seemed like the most major of the maintenance issues. So what's the um, next step? We give you our blessing and you go forward with this or what are you, what are you looking for? We would love your approval. And then we're going to place the order for the signs. And we, it, it's a little bit ambitious, but we'd love to have it installed before Moorfest so that we can have a story walk up for Moorfest. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know in the past we've had complaints about the stakes in the grounds once it gets dark. And so we've, the library has made an effort over the last couple of years to pull them up before dusk. Oh. Um, but this would be out of the way of all of that and still something that people could enjoy during Morefest. So we need to get, you know, installation materials and some volunteer labor to bring out the auger and pour the cement and all that, or the concrete and all that, so. So at this point, you're not looking for any reimbursement from the town for this? No, the friends are an independent 501c3. So we supplement the funding that the library gets from the town. Okay. So. Is the school putting any funds up to as well? They did. They supported right. one side. Yeah. Right. Good. Well, I don't know. Uh, why don't we go ahead and sort of want to make a motion? Yeah, I'd, I'd make a motion that we uh, go ahead with uh, <clears throat> the storybook project. Second. Kelly, any further discussions? All in favor for aye. 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 Great. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, ladies. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, guys. It's great. I can't yeah. wait to do it. Oh, good idea. All right. Awesome. And you do that story walk up in Mad River, which is always fun to see. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. They uh, used to have something like it at Great Escape. Library hour. If you go down there, there's. Like the old original pieces of it with the signs and the story pages. Mm -hmm. If you look closely, it's there. Hey, Allison. How are you? Good. Good. How are you? Good. Hey, Allison. How are you? Good. Thanks for having me. Okay. Ready? Mm -hmm. Yep. So I am acting as the, or uh, serving as the, treasurer for the library trustees right now and the trustees have been discussing some creative ways to um, try to keep our assistant librarian um, I mean she's she's here and she's not going anywhere maybe but we would really like to give her a little bit of a raise and we know that the budget is already set for this year um, and we can discuss 
a raise when the, the time comes, but we have some money in our donations that we wanted to kind of supplement a little raise for her. Um, it's a, an amount of four hundred and seven, excuse me, seventy-two dollars and some change, um, and it comes right out of the library donation. So it wouldn't be any cost to the town or anything. Um, and I brought it up to Sherilyn to see if that was possible, and she said that we would need to talk about it. So um, I wanted to present that as something that we would like to do, mm -hmm. um, and see if anyone has any objections or thoughts. Or... <laughs> No, it's, yep. well, it's, your, it's your money, and you feel she deserves it. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Yeah, I'm all for it. Sure. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Oh, why don't we get a motion on that because of moving money around? Oh. Oh, okay. I think a motion that to, to support the uh, use of funds from the library trustees to help support the assistant library. Second. Thank you, Kelly. Uh, I'll, uh, any further discussion? Pardon me. All in favor of aye. 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 Thanks. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you. That was quick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. We're just clicking through it. Hi, everybody. Hello. Hello. Hi, Jennifer. Nice to meet Jennifer. I am. Um, right. First off, good evening. Um, and I hope you've had a lovely, rainy day. We have yeah. to nice to get yeah. yeah. I just want to be home. Yeah, it's really bad. The river's really low. It's, really low. it's mm, not so great. Um, I'm here tonight. I am the current HOA vice president, or sorry, president, actually. I just took over from vice president um, for Gallagher Acres. Um, mm -hmm. Our community was established starting in about 2010, the new development. And in 2020, we finished. We are all done building. All roads are in. Nate Hayward was our builder, and he turned over the property, so to speak, to all of us in the community to take over, frighteningly, <laughs> as we're trying to figure all of that out. Um, and so what we've been doing is, um, up until this point, um, there are technically three to four roads in our community. Two are town-owned and town-maintained, and two, which used to just be one, but now I guess we've changed one of the names to Gallagher Acres Extension, um, are both private roads. And the roads are, at this point, um, pretty comparable, um, but they cost us, as community members, as you might imagine, to maintain. Um, we've done some work to look into how to make sure that they are up to the same standard as the road below. Um, and so I have some information that I've collected over the last couple of weeks of doing this. I have a petition. I walked around to every house in the community, not just the... So the, the way the community works, and I can show you on a map, um, the way that it looks is the lower, and I have one for each of you, I'm sorry. That's right. I did make lots of copies. Um, the, the lower road um, and the middle road, which are, is actually literally named Middle Road, um, are the town run roads, and the upper loop actually has as many houses on it as the two lower roads. Um, so it's actually got as much traffic, if not more, than the lower two rows. Um, and if you look in the packet that I made, um, there's actually a um, VTrans map, and I think it's actually the same one that's on your wall right there, uh, or very similar. But the latest one on VTrans doesn't go past 2016. Um, it doesn't. Ex our road up top doesn't exist in VTrans. Um, and so one of the things that we would like, the entire community as I walked around, every single person in every single house said we'd love to see if the town would be willing to um, adopt the upper road as part of the community because it would help us as a community, the whole group, feel like a united community but also be part of more town as we really feel we are. They have a lot of support in the select board, they have a lot of support in um, believing in what you guys can do and, and valuing us and we value you. Um, and they really do trust that when we were told by Nate as he handed the reins over to all of us, well, all we had to do was ask. All we had to do was come and you know propose and let you know what was going on. Um, now that our community is finally finished, there's no more building, that was kind of what he said. When the community is done, that's when you come and make your proposal. So I'm here with that in mind. Um, one of the things that you might say is, um, we don't want to take on any more roads right now, and I get that. Um, you're already maintaining the two lower roads. 
Um, they are graded and um, well, I don't know all the technical terms. <laughs> they're done, everything's done in the summer at least twice, and then in the winter they're plowed. Um, and it's helpful for our children who are walking to go down to the bus stop. So our kids all walk from the upper road to down to the bus stop, and they're walking in the snow until it gets plowed by an outside company. We have outside companies who have to come and maintain it. As you might imagine, it's hard for us to find outside companies who are capable of doing the work. In 2019, we actually had the road upgraded. Island Excavating came in, put down the, the requisite amount of um, layers that were required. Um, I have a, actually a, an invoice for what they did for us. Um, and they were able to change, they made sure that the culverts were up to, um, up to snuff, so to speak. They made sure that they put in the right uh, materials. They used stay mat, they used gravel, they used sand, they used all of the stuff that they were supposed to use. Um, and that was done in 2019 in September. Um, since then, we've had two companies come in to try to help with the potholes and maintain, but as you might imagine, one of the things that's tricky is, unfortunately, some companies who maintain both in the summer and the winter might kind of ruin your road a little bit in the winter and then have to then fix it for you, which has been a little predatory for us. And so that's a hard process for us as community members who are trying to figure this out. <coughs> to start, you know, bankers or teachers, or <laughs> we don't know what we're doing. And so that's been really tricky. Um, and so uh, the other thing that I know might be a concern is the width of the road. So I did a lot, I actually went out with measurements to do my own measuring to figure out what the difference is between the two roads. Um, and I measured the middle and lower road and both are at about 17 feet wide, um, standard across. The upper road is not. It is um, 50, no, sorry, 17 at its widest and 12 at its narrowest. And so when I walked around with my petition, one of the things that I asked people is, would you be okay with it being a one-way road? If that were something that the town needed to do to make sure that it was feasible. Every single member, every single member in every single household said, heck yes, because um, they want their children to feel safe. They want to feel, have their children be able to ride their bikes. They want to let them um, walk without feeling like the cars might be in the way or they may get hurt. Um, and so one of the things we're seeing is a lot of our community members are struggling with maintenance on their cars because as the road starts to degrade, we have to try to maintain it two to three times a year. So I understand this may be a longer process than I'm asking for right now, but I wanted to at least bring it to your attention and see what could possibly be done, what steps there might need to be done. If you need to come out and survey the road, check the road, let me know what needs to be done kinds of things. Um, that's, I, I think that's what I'm hoping for at this point, because I, as I walked around to my community members with a petition, every single person came to the door with a big smile on their face saying, absolutely, yes, please, thank you so much for doing this. We have so much trust in the select board and we really hope that they can help us in this. So. It's, uh, I'm glad that they have a lot of trust in us. <laughs> historically, historically, we've never done this. Well, I know in your town plan, it says in 2015, um, that you have the right to decide what to do. And the road is, because it was built um, after the main part of the community was done, it wasn't, it was considered a private road. Um, but it is nearly, I mean, I, I, I walk that road five miles every single night. I, I do a figure eight loop five times. And it is, the road is no different on either, either part of it. Um, the only difference, and I will admit, is the width. And we've investigated whether or not it would need to be um, widened. Widening would be difficult because of the way the culvert system has been set up with the, the drainage ditches, which is why I'm suggesting a one-way road. Mm -hmm. um, it would also really alleviate that need for our kids and that safety risk for our kids. And we have a lot of, we have a lot of kids in our neighborhood, all of which go to more town schools, all of which love the community, who we, and we, we really are very supportive of this community. Every single person, nearly every single person in the petition even said, um, and I have the petition slate, by the way, um, everyone was like, we know that there's a sidewalk study going on. We would mm -hmm. love that too. But, you, know, every, uh, you can read, there, there are 49 signatures on here from 42 different houses, which sounds funny when I say that. Okay. Every single house I walked to said, absolutely. So. No, we're really very pleased to have the expansion of Gallagher Acres because it's uh, helped keep our school. I, I was actually <coughs> part of that. Um, I, um, I was actually very um, heavily involved in that um, mm -hmm. process when, the, when that was all happening. 
Um, I used to run the SOS meetings. Um, okay, that's right. Yes. <laughs> okay. As John mentioned, this is um, something we, we haven't done in the past, but that doesn't preclude us from doing it in the future. Um, I think this is something that we need to uh, kind of digest a little Absolutely. bit. Absolutely. Um, meet with our road commissioner. Mm -hmm. Um, and try to figure out what you know what, what's it going to cost us to do this and mm -hmm. how does it fit in. Um, as John mentioned, you're a valuable, valuable part of the community. I mean, you are on the other side of town, but still a valuable part of our community, and we need to take care of you folks as well. And certainly, that um, when we were doing the tax rate earlier and we were discussing um, the grant list mm -hmm. and how. Uh, you know, years ago, like we saw the dip when we, when you guys started building because not that we're dipping the taxes because the grant list was going up. Yeah. So we uh, appreciate that. So I see the value here. Um, so I want to take a look at what you have. We appreciate your time and um, give this you know ample discussion. And mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure we'll be getting together more than once in the future to, to talk this over. See how this might work, or, or if it doesn't. But um, you're, so only, have, you're only talking the upper road, not, this, the not upper that road. branch that goes up. So there. this branch might be the trickier, trickier part, and I do, I do recognize that. Um, this is this, a couple of houses up there. There's right? four technically, yeah. um, and it is very much it's much narrower than the other road. This road is widest from here all the way past my house here. This is the narrow spot right there. And it, dip, it does dip in. Not that it couldn't be widened there, but again, the one way would preclude that. It wouldn't even be necessary. No, I was just asking about that. That's yeah. like a driveway, really. Yeah it, yeah, it does sort of, it has a good turnaround, actually. Um, mm -hmm. It's, it's and, that, and that actually, what's interesting is this road could be widened much easier because it has common land associated with it rather than property. So that's mm -hmm. actually much more possible to widen than the, the upper road is. But so, yes. Yeah. As it is now, with um, and you guys are paying does the whole um, place here split the cost for the... Um, the whole community does not. Only the upper road does. Mm -hmm. Only the upper road. Yes. It, it, uh, for our HOA fees, what we do is it's parsed out by several different things. We parse out our septic system. We parse out, because there's five of those. So each house is given a particular cost based on where we live. So where I live on the upper route, I have the most expensive septic and the most expensive route, <laughs> which is fine, but um, but that's just the way it sugared out. So. So those people on that cul-de-sac. Yeah, like, yeah. So the cul-de-sac um, also pay for their their portion of the road, and that comes out because it can all be done at the same time. So if you consider that it's about twenty houses, all twenty houses split that cost as part of the, of our HOA fees. And I just got I just got an estimate for costs right now just to get pothole repaired. So expensive, isn't it? it yeah. was <laughs> we had somebody in the past that was more expensive than somebody I was able to find this time, but it's still it's gonna cost us a pretty penny. And um, and it, and then we plow it as well. So and that's a contract that we do. And that's tricky because the person that we use isn't great about coming out before students go to school. So our kids are walking sometimes in, you know, ankle to knee deep snow down to the, to the school bus. And that's, you know, I've got the oldest kids in our neighborhood, one who's a senior, and then they go down to going into seventh grade. And they're walking down through that, so. Uh, so my, my main concern is, first of all, I, I, I'd love to see us be able to take that over. But my main concern is, um, the, the specs yep. that would have to be followed because yep. the other roads are grandfathered, right? And I don't know anything about one way. I don't. I don't know if the state will. Uh, I don't think the state will. There's a standard for class three roads, yeah, which we get funding from the state to help maintain. And, I know. And yeah. It sounds like to get to that to get to that standard from where you're at, it's going to cost your community a significant amount of money. I did a lot of research to try to find the standards. I know that the culvert systems that we have do meet the standard. They're all 18 inches to 24 inch um, wow. diameter. That's the mm -hmm. first thing. I know that the last piece of research, and I, I 
found it, and then it's one of those lovely things about Google, I lost it. Um, there was a nice table someplace um, that explained the width requirements based on the speed limit. And so the speed limit in our roads is all 15. It's below the 25 mile an hour threshold. And so what it said was that as long as it's below that 25 threshold, it's a seven foot wide lane with, a, with no shoulder, was what it said. So technically, at 12 feet, it's a one way. At the 15 feet, it's actually a two way. Um, I don't love it as a two way, but we can handle it as a two way. So. All right, so why don't we go ahead and look and see what, um, just really look into it and see yeah. if it's feasible. And that's all I'm asking for, sir. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. And I will, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to let my, my community know, like, they're willing to look into this. I'm, it's hard for me to walk back and say, no. I, I, they're going to be much happier when I can say, they're at least willing to look into this and, and see what can be done. I mean, they blow up with that, yes, of course. But, <laughs> but a no would probably be hard. <laughs> yeah, no, I think we're all yeah, like to do it, but we need to, uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of things we need to look at. If it can be possible, great. And if it can't, we, we'll uh, have given it a good uh, try. I very much appreciate your time, everyone. Thank okay. you so much. Perfect. Thank Thank you. You. Yeah, the sidewalk is. Oh, I'm so excited yeah. about the yeah. sidewalk. We're all yeah, excited. Yeah. We love yeah. walking, and so that's a good thing. Yeah, the pain will walk right into town. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Is someone, I don't know. Yeah, let's keep all that together for Sasha. Or at least uh, one copy of it for the senior Sasha. All right, you know what, um, we have a couple minutes, we're just going on to the course of communications. Let's see if there's anyone else, I know Denise went on later, Sushi she had any, um, she wanted to talk about. Denise, did you have any yeah. public comment? Uh, no, I, oops, I did not have any public comment, um, I was just listening in. Um, could you clarify something with uh, the Gallagher Acres? Um, discussion why they why they are requesting um that the town take over all of the maintenance i didn't quite catch that well i, I can't speak for them but i think they're just wanting to basically hand that road over bring it up to the town specs and, and hand it over um, okay so they want the town to incur the cost of doing that no. No. But it would be, they're asking for a class three highway. Yes. Um, so that we would take over the future maintenance of it. Yes. Okay. Okay. And that's something where we'll look yes. into and see if it is possible and, and then what the specs for a class three and what it would cost them to bring it up to that. Okay. Yeah, I, I didn't quite. Um, Okay, now now I understand. Sorry, I missed that first section. Trying to understand why they were were requesting it, um, but it sounds like they want a a better graded, better conditioned road, um, and then the town would request that they uh, main, and then I'm sorry, they would request that, that the town maintain it um, at a class okay. three. Okay. That, so, they're basically trying, so they're basically trying to change the type of road it currently is um, in order to get the town to maintain it. Got that would it. Be the correct assessment, yeah. Okay, thank you. And yeah. uh, no other questions or, or comments on that. Okay, thank you. I know you get on that. I just want to make sure you are. I appreciate that. Well, thank you. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead um, reports. Ms. Sasha, what do you have for us? Um, Ray got the RFP out to me, and I got those out to all the companies for the River Road repaving. Um, right. And that was Darlene on the website on the last week, and she's getting a JD and getting some information so that she understands more about what's been going on. Okay. So that started. Good. Um, I also wanted to ask about, you guys were going to discuss the last talk for Aaron, for the zoning administrator. <coughs> I don't even know if I saw that. 
first I've heard of that. So she could use them from all work. Oh, so she, um, did we discuss that? Or? It was kind of a touchdown subject when she was here. Oh, when she was here. Yeah, yeah. 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 during the interview she mentioned something like that. I don't know if we committed to anything. You weren't here. Yeah. Sorry. That's all right. That's why I was there. Yeah, I, I, I believe um, she did say something about having hours both here and remotely. Yes. Okay. Where are we in um, our budget stuff or something like I that? I can find out. Yeah. Um, and if we have one that we have Stefan using for, for that, I think the zoning administrator should probably have access to something like that, and especially if we're, and if they're doing off-site work, which we are approving and yeah. Yeah. encouraging, uh, I would rather have it on my own device than someone else's. Yeah, I think that's good. Yeah. So, yeah, why don't, and why don't you talk with Butternut and see what the thoughts are as what well, it should be, and she may have an idea as well. And we pretty much decided this is way outdated anyway, right? So, probably this thing here, yeah, I'm yeah. sure. Yeah. 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 That could be part of it too, is I don't think we've had our computer, any computer upgrade this year, except for the one that was okay. set on. So that could be a good thing too. Right, well, talk to Mike and see, make sure our, all our systems are up to date. Yeah. Please. That's it? Yep. Should have seen the picture I saw of Sasha this weekend. Oh. <laughs> oh. It was in the. What was that you were on? A big water slide or something water down? Sherilyn's? Yeah. Yep. Sherilyn's grandkids had a huge party. Uh, <laughs> we know that's but Randy, what you get for us, but a uh, couple of things. Uh, so Joe is in the process of doing the monument repair work out here. Um, not going as quite as fast as we thought, but he's prepared to pour concrete tomorrow and get the monument set, and then it'll be cleaned and that'll be done. Um, I'm talking. I've talked to a former Deloitte when it's about the sidewalk repair. What they'd like to do is um, uh, have or send a check to the town and have the town pay for it. Uh, it they'll reimburse the town or they'll pay the town first, whatever. So I have spoken to Joe Dad because the town has agreed to do the prep work. Yep. I've asked Joe to get a price to see what it is and you know try to come up with the right price. And I, I don't think anybody had a problem with that. It's it's everything does it as long as it gets done. Uh, it doesn't cost the town money. Right. So uh, that's what else I'm working on. <coughs> Thank um, you. And I did that RFP. And uh, that's going to be good the first meeting in August. Uh, any uh, idea if that will happen this year? Uh, every indication is that uh, some, some contractors are really going to be aggressive about it. Really? Yeah. Surprising. Good. Yeah, this is for the. Oh, waste system. Yeah, no, this is a river road over by Oh, okay, sorry. Even busy right Thank you very much. Kelly? Nothing. You've been moving out of town. I'm still wondering if you have yeah. time to do anything here. All right, big dog at the end. Well, so this is reports and communications then, or do I do all new business no, or all? No, do reports and communications. I know we were going to talk about the, um, you want to talk about the town hall later as far as the management or something like yeah, that? Yeah, well, that and a little update about the RFP and stuff, so I can wait till all business. You want all right, that's that? fine. Uh, I mean, and then, John, uh, we could talk about transportation stuff, yeah. too. You want to do that one now? As well? Sure. So. This is the permit application for moving the RSFS. Which is the <laughs> that sound radar yeah, sign. Right. So yeah. well no, the radar uh the yeah. Yeah. so uh, I had hoped that I'd have some of it filled out tonight in a rough draft for everybody to look at, but I'm sorry I got a little busy and didn't do it. But I also thought that I would go talk to Martin too about it, just to give him a heads up since he might, you know, be involved yep. and we have to get this special bracket and stuff like that. 
But I mean, for my first go through, I think I, I'm not seeing that we'll be responsible for the amending our permit. I'm not seeing that we'll have a fee to, you know, I think the only cost we're going to really have is buying this new bracket and, you know, nice. the concrete and the excavation. And so that's where we are with that. And then, uh, you know, uh, John and I met and I'll get some meeting out this week. Uh, we, we're still, we're working on some, you know, getting some of these signs. We could, there's supposedly four more somewhere. We're putting those up on some, picking some rows that we're gonna put those up on. If anybody has any suggestions, you know, we'll do that. And John is gonna get with Ray, I don't know, maybe when you see him at the meeting Thursday or something, to talk about whether we do this temporary crosswalk up by oh, the yeah. store post yeah. office, you know, what that would be involved, because we did get a little, a drawing from the state that sort of incorporates what you have, what we have for the sidewalk mm -hmm. project and what we could do temporarily. So we've got that sort of in the, in the mode. And, um, and then just, you know, whether we going forward, not, you know, we'll go ahead with relocating the RF, RSFS, or whether we do something as the folks did over in Route 2 and do, um, a speed study on both sides of our village, similar to what they did at Waitsville when they dropped the speed limits coming into the villages. And whether, you know, in that email that I forwarded you all this reference to that. Um, so that's just something out there on the horizon. And that was about it, right? I think. Yeah, yeah, that pretty much covers yeah. it. So, okay. that's Thank you. not all the report. So hopefully uh, when I see you, Next time we'll have a permit ready to go, so we can we'll relocate this this summer or fall. Yeah, sounds good. That'll be nice. Good job. Okay, so I uh, attended the Friends of the Bad River um, meeting on climate change, and which they aren't going to be on Tuesday night. But just saw uh, in our select board meeting was on Tuesday. We I missed you, John. By the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But it doesn't sound, seem like I missed too much. Anyway. No, you didn't. We were here for <laughs> Yeah, that was a quick meeting. Uh, but this is the, actually, it was the, the Gund Institute um, at UVM uh, presented the latest climate um, assessment. And uh, interestingly, my daughter was actually involved in the first climate assessment, assessment uh, as a fellow of the Gund. Uh, for her uh, master's uh, degree. And um, so she was the lead student writer on the first one, which was uh, in 2014. And that's the one that the whole federal climate assessment is based on. Vermont was the leader on that, you know, like we are in so many, so many areas. But anyway, so uh, Ann and I uh, attended that meeting. And going forward, they're gonna have, um, there's another one, August, Fifth, I believe, um, and so what we're doing is basically expanding the bridge to river, the company, uh, uh, you know, climate change, and and you know, relate it to the valley. So it's, it's a good, good future for tackling all of that. I would really like to get the uh, the road roundtables up up again. With the road cruises, now. yeah, yeah, we haven't had them in a long time. Um, but I think now that we're expanding the uh, Ridge to River so that we're going to have more than just town officials involved, um, hopefully things will uh, you know, expand and we can do some more of those things. Does anyone know if we had um, to go along with that? Uh, I know they were just talking about the grants that were given from. Um, it had to do with climate change and the town's participating. We had maybe a, a, this year, do you know of anything like that where we did the ditch work in the past? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, as well. Okay, I, there was a good article on that in the month later, and I was just curious as to whether we had received the funding to. And that would go around with you around. Yeah. Yeah. Things. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Anything else, John? Um, no, I guess that's that's it. All right, well, I'm much. Although right before I came, I uh, 
had a gentleman, uh, in fact, he has an appointment at our next select board meeting. I think you, you can cancel Lee Rogers. Okay. Um, a gentleman called me, he was buying some land that's landlocked on Cobb Hill. And <laughs> the, the, the lottery told him that we could give him a, um, a right of way to it. Um, so I set him straight on that. Um, and there isn't a law on the books that there is, there's timber that's valuable that needs to be extracted and you can't be a way for the owners to, to agree on it. The, the select board can step in and give a temporary easement. Um, so I said, that would be an extreme case. And that's all the English law. So I said there would be no way that we're giving out easements to, uh, to people. Although I would like, Echo P finds a way um, to make this work. You sound like a nice gentleman who wanted to build a home, but um, we don't give out easements. So um, now let's go ahead and approve, uh, approve the minutes. We have uh, July 5th. Um, is there a motion on that? I make the motion to approve the minutes on July 5th. Thank you, Ray. Second. Thank you very much. And is there any further discussion? All in favor, hold on. Aye. 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 All right. Kelly, do you have any business for us? No. Ray, do you need it? Yep. John or Don? Or, um, um, nothing new. Nothing new. All right. So let's, nor do I. Sasha, do you have anything that needs to be brought up in here? No. All right. So, I'm going to go with old business, and I know, Don, you have some stuff you want to share with us. Let's start with you tonight. Okay, uh, well, I was hoping that uh, maybe on 8-1, on the next meeting, that we could um, review and discuss the management plan that has been rough draft for the town hall that we handed out to you or to everybody a couple of weeks ago. Maybe take, people could take it. Uh, chance to, to re read it and go through it and we could spend some time, you know, just kind of getting the select board's input, you know, like it's just a rough draft and to share some thoughts on how going forward uh, the town hall could be managed. So if that's, that on, um, the, uh, if that's on the agenda? Yeah, and I'm thinking, you know, there'd be some, maybe some folks from the town hall committee would like to join or, you know, We've gotten input from the town hall committee, the trustees, and the friends, and from Cheryl Lynn and, and Sasha who looked at it, and you know now you have a board and, and sure, that's that's right. Right. so if that's can be on the agenda, then and let me know the time I can let some people know. Uh, and then so the other thing that some a good piece of news is we received two uh, uh, proposals. Our, you know, for the uh, architectural services schematic design for the town hall. Um, I, uh, so I just got them what, on what a Friday, um, and so now what I'm going to do before we have a meeting with the select board on on the two proposals is I'm going to go with the two other or three other folks and do this evaluation process where. Someone doesn't look at the cost yet, you know, what the proposals are, but this goes through them and you have a great waiting, yeah. waiting system and we'll all go through that. And then, you know, once we do that, we can um, then present it to the board that, you know, the, so that again would be kind of shooting for an eight one date because in the RFP, we actually outlined a whole schedule so that, um, this can be worked on and get to a point that we're at a place come town meeting where you know we'll come january when we have to get something to be on them we'll have information that we can present at town meeting so there is a little bit of a clock ticking so to that point i guess i the request that i have to make is and, and i won't divulge because i know what the two proposals are but I could say that somewhere around 5%, if we could somehow um, delegate 5% of the opera funds, it's the only place I can think of how we could fund this 
piece of work for the town hall. Um, to, 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 that would be a way to, to go forward to be able to hire this firm to do the schematics. And, you know, it's a whole, it's not just, you know, there's going to be meetings and they meet with the community and they, they we outline, if you're familiar with the RFP, there's all these steps they're going to do about community outreach, getting some different ideas from, you know, taking what we've already done and then coming in and presenting it to the board, you know, meeting with the select board and the library and, the, you know, trustees and then also the town. Anyways, I won't go through the whole thing, but there's dates, something in the fall, so that, again, so that we get to that point. So, so we're really at a... 25,000 roughly, is that Yeah, right? um, that would be a ballpark, because, you know, somewhere around there. But, I mean, we're really at that point now that, you know, the, uh, the rough, you know, it's, the rubber hits the road. I mean, if we're really going to say, this is our beautiful town hall, and we got to do something about it and fix it up. This is this is really the next step. I mean, and the, in that proposal, it also it, you know takes it looks in the water mitigation problem, the site drainage, and you know there's there's a whole package of items, and, and it can maybe end up being that it's you know it is the community building with the library, or we might all pick, pick, decide to pick a menu where it's just fixing the town hall. You know, but there's there's things that have to be done for sure. So other than, I don't know where else we talked about it at our last meeting, there's not like really, I don't, that's the, I know those funds would be available, but it's, it's for that purpose of infrastructure. And uh, if, if we can't see our, see to doing that, then it's just gonna kick the can down the road, you know, until, you know, next year when we would maybe put stuff in the budget to do a schematic and, you know, so, anyways, that's the spiel for tonight. But it's good that we got two proposals, and uh, they're both quite interesting. You know, quite. You know, they're both good. When are you guys evaluating those? Well, we're going to evaluate them. Uh, I'd like to, you know, get this week. You know, this week into next week, so that we come on the first with you know here's our this is what we this is what we recommend here's the scorecard this is the way how we weighed it up this is how we came to it you know uh, because literally right after that um by eight nine you know the the selected firm has got a is already you know is supposed to start up you know and, and organize their first meeting with uh you know with the players Start, start going, start working on it. So, um, it seems to me like it would, it's a, you know, I, I guess, you know, it's near and dear. I've been working on it for, you know, two years now or something, but it just okay. seems like that's the way to keep it going. I don't know how, how else we can. You, you, you expect to sign a contract with the architect in August? Yeah, or, yeah, give them the, you, you know, no, they would produce probably, they would, I would tell them that you would tell a firm to get going and then they would send their, you know, a formal, con they could make the contract and then we would review it and have Ryan Shems review it and, you know, but in the meanwhile, they, they could get going, you know, and know that, know that it's happening. So I think so, between now and our next meeting, everyone needs to think about just what Don said, um, and he'll come with a recommendation as far as the firm and this is how much it's going to cost you. And yeah. we need to make that decision. Are we is this money we want to spend out of the, our uh, ARPA funds or not? And, and you're, you're, you're planning on going to the ARPA fund committee. Well, I was going to go with the Zoom you know, call. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But then it's before. two weeks or something. Yeah. But, um, and then when it, when the Zoom didn't work, then I was sitting there thinking about it. I'm going, well, they're going to make recommendations to the select board, so I can think I'll just make my own recommendations to the select board, seeing that Probably I'm on the select off. board, you know, <laughs> saying that you know this would, you know, and I mean, you know, it's still a sum of money, but it's you know, it's it is a small amount of the the pie, you know. I mean, yeah. everybody's trying to nibble away at that pie, but this is really to 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 uh, preserve and, 
and fix our t beautiful town hall, you know. And, now, it's something yeah. we've talked about for several years, and to your point, I think it's something we either, you know, Fisher Cup or something yeah. like that. I think so. And this will give us the opportunity to look at to see really what it, what's going to cost us to to make this usable or, or just kind of up, you know, keep it so it doesn't fall on the ground. Right. You know, there's yeah. two yeah. options, yeah. basically. We, uh, so let's, you know, let's think about it. I, I think there's support here, um, but come in with your, your, your selling shoes on. Top. Okay. Yeah, no, well, I'll and, come in with this value, with yeah. the evaluation that we've done um, on the two, on the two uh, proposals. Yeah. At this point, I think as well, there should be either something done or not and just move forward on, on yeah. the projects. And then where you get that, this is no, that would be no indication that the rest of the money was coming from our funds to fix the building. Oh no, you know, actually, because I don't think we'll need to, we could, there's so many other funding sources when we get to that point, you know, in 2023 or something. Right. That, you know, right. I, I don't think we, you know, the, I think we just, this would be a good way to get, get going. Otherwise right. we have to wait another year. There might be um, things where you need to match grants and this might take care of that already. So, yeah. All so. right. Very good. Anything else, Bob? Uh, well, we're, I, we're working on the town, you know, I've got someone looking at the interior with the condensation problem. I don't have an update on that really. So, um, uh, that, you know, that same person is going to replace the two trim boards in the back and, and, um, I was going to have someone look at the tree that is being in the building. In the oh, right. I, you know, so, yeah, that's, that's the, about uh, it. At the, at the garage? Yeah, at the garage. I haven't, I haven't taken a look at that. But. Yeah, the other the tree man. Uh, <laughs> yeah, take a look in the back. I don't think it's okay. just cutting the one limb. I think it's, it would be All better right. for, the, 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 for that tree, the way it's leaning and, uh -huh. okay. you know, and, and okay. shading the building and stuff. But, you know, I, I don't like to take tree out, trees down either. Like the way it's sitting up on that bank right there. It's what knocked off the two trim boards, the branch. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, anyways. That's it for me. John, any other old business that you have that you. Oh, actually, to come to think of it, it's kind of new old business. Way back when they entered Moortown from Middlesex, um, they had day lilies and the the little island where, you know, the pole. Yeah, okay, yeah. And just like they killed all the plants across that were planted, even though they, they didn't, the state didn't do what they said they were going to do, but somebody oh, came along know. with this, with herbicide and, and but, it was the, vine, that the vines, yeah, the vines are finally, the big finally, yeah, wall, finally right? the yeah, vines are finally the taken. The state? Yeah, they, they Clean it right up. Clean it right up. All that money. This is when I was on the board back in the early yeah. yeah. 2000s. Yeah. That's so. right. Yeah. And um, but at least in the island, I mean, they, there were daylilies planted, and they, they mowed them all down. And now it's just weeds. Um, and so Ruth is a member of the uh, a river runs through, which is Waterbury Garden Club, but they also do take care of Moortown. And so she wanted to see if. Perhaps they could pursue planting some things. I think it's a great idea. Yeah, so I'll, I'll tell you that. I don't know if the, what, what the rest of the garden club will feel about it, because most of them live in, in Waterbury. But How do we get they also, they also, by the way, they also wanted to plant something, because we said, can we do something in Moortown? And she thought about the enter, entering Moortown sign from, from the north. Uh, but the landowner didn't want to, because no. 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 they thought that they would have to maintain it, stuff like that. Who's the landowner? Stephanie. Oh, I don't know. Isn't it that Stephanie that owns the land there? I thought so. No, it's no, it's now. Yeah, I think so. No, it wasn't. It wasn't. It, it wasn't her. Stephanie, I think no. she would be yeah. I thought it was the house. Up, I thought it was the house up. After the sign on the right there? Yeah, I think. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I'll ask Stephanie, but I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought she oh, had that land up there. Because yeah. yeah. that little field there where the sign is not field, there's a little opening there. Yes, that's all there. I think yeah. that's theirs. 
Well, that's interesting. Yeah. All right, yeah, but, we'll check but, into that. But on the island on 100B out there, if, how do we get this? You guys, they fix it all up. How do we get the state not to mow it down? Well, that's the state. That's what I would, I would get know. into. Well, we yeah. can talk to the guy that you did for the District 5. Or right. Whatever. It's district, it's a, district 6. District 6. You can ask him to. I mean, give him a. Hard to do anything. I mean, <laughs> why do they cut that down? I remember we were trying to get them to replant that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, they it's, never did. Remember? No, no. Yeah. And they actually, they, they did plant some um, uh, service berry trees up, up on the cheater, too. And now, that I mean, they've just been sh completely shaded out with all the aspects. But again, I mean, how do you, you can't expect to send guys up there to cut those. Right, that's right. for sure. Temporarily, all you, all, all you can do is Green Mountain Power does and just spray the herbicides. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's probably not good. Yeah. Um, all right, so let's, I, Mr. Warren, we'll just go with the old business. Tonight we heard that we're not going to be spending a terrible amount of money on the Sheriff's Patrol, uh, but that we have the money that's in that line item that we lose if we don't use it. I think we should consider the um, movable. The trailer, trailers, yeah, that's things. great. Yeah, yeah, the data. Uh, the data. I think yeah, yeah. Sasha came up with that earlier. And can, we, can we use some of the money to move the RSFS too? Yeah, I think so. I think yeah, that's right a speed yeah. thing. Yeah. So Sasha, I know you had a couple quotes or a couple things. I don't think um, the officer's going to probably remember to get back to you on that. If you could actually send him something, say, look, I've been looking at them. These are the choices that are out there. What do you, what's your opinion? Because I, I didn't understand what specifications they were going around as far as what it needs to meet. Yeah, I did. The, he said the mood, the mudgy or the mood or something, something that, that the tape mm -hmm. that you, you know. Yeah, I mean, you know, all that. That's the mudgy the is the, um, the rate of speed that the light blinks because it has to be a certain, it has to be a certain right. speed. Oh. If it's too fast, then it's too slow probably yeah. so anyways we'll figure that out and then see what we can afford with one or two of those um and yeah. work with martin on that so yeah. probably placements um, i'd be interested to see what that tape would cost that he was talking about that you can just lay down and it tracks yeah. all the data because then you could data. you could i mean just lay the tape down and well, well i think that's something that we can Maybe check into CDRPC because yes. I think that's what yeah, said that's today. Yeah, yeah. Because that would be a good as far as. Because um, then you know where your problems are, so you're not sending them on. Yeah, no, I think that's a really good you idea. Know, yeah. Out somewhere when it doesn't make um, sense. Now this is something new, uh, new old business as Jonathan said, and maybe even communications or announcements. So it's a little bit of everything. And so I got a call, um, but I was thought he was going to be online today. I don't, I'm surprised he's not here. Um, from Stefan, and um, he has some very exciting news that uh, they received a donation uh, from the Red Hen, Red Hen Bakery from their tip jar, um, well over 10K. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The fire department? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's terrible. Yeah. That's so nice. Yeah, yeah no, no, it's so good. good. Yeah. And so he, you know, discussed um, perhaps putting uh, maybe half of that or five grand towards school bear equipment and then taking the rest and using it on their type, you know, even, you know, a better French fry, kind of things like that that they could use for them, themselves. And so I thought that was very, very nice uh, both ways, them getting it, um, stuff on reaching out. And, um, so I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, that's amazing. That's great. Yeah, that's really good. I mean, I see Randy and Liza are all the picture. Yeah, that's what I wanted. I was waiting. I wanted Stefan to tell us or tell you. Um, but it's going to get out, and I just don't want anyone to be flat footed and say, What are you talking about? I'm going to make sure that you know them very well. Um, so that you can that's thank That's great. Them. Wow. Yeah. So he, and he said he was, uh, he had no idea about it. And he got, Basically alerted or checking the mail or something like that. That was it. Beautiful. Yeah. He uh, he was 
pretty excited about that. Same conversation. Um, he also told me that they need to um, spend about fifteen hundred dollars on one of the pieces of equipment to upgrade the air or pump or something. I don't know, like that or not, but um, so anyway, he's got some money. So he's got some money, anyways. Um, so he was going to look in to see what we have. I think he's going to meet with Sasha here to see what we have for maintenance money, but still in the budget here too. Uh, well, now he's doing on the tanker trucks. He, we did talk about that as well. He's getting um, prices, if you will. He's going out to a couple different manufacturers and just getting a budget uh, budget number. Um, so he's working on that. Uh, so yeah, I think that's good with me, the old business. But Greg, do you have anything? I do. I uh... The dash cam, I think talked to Martin about them, and it sounds like he really wants them, and I think it's a really good idea. Uh, he thinks they're going to be around $150, 200 a piece. I don't, you know, try to get some quotes, and, yeah. and, uh, but I, I think it's a good idea to have dash cams on, yeah. on the trucks and mm -hmm. uh, probably on the excavator. Yep, excavator mm -hmm. and the... the um What's that big thing with the radar? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the big thing with the, the big yellow thing. But I, you know, I, I get encouraged and I to pursue that. I think it's something that we should do. Um, I also asked Mark to get Rodney to make a written report of what happened with him, uh, just so we have it on the file. If this shows up five years from now, and, you know, we're all not around. It'd be a good idea to have some some yeah. record. Yeah, that's a good idea, right? So okay. it's actually a good follow up on that. Four or five. Yeah. And Sasha's also, I think, worked with uh, Martin on the camera. I think you've done some research. Sure. Oh, is it really? Okay. Good. So perfect. So if you guys can pursue that and figure out what we need there. And I haven't heard back from Clark as far as the, anything on the village wastewater system. I know they met with the two engineers. I have not heard the recommendation or anything like that. I think Clark's sick right now. He's sick? Yeah. He's what? Sick. Oh. Is COVID sick? Or? Oh, you got COVID now? Gosh, I just like saw him the other day on my door. Everybody that held out there, they're all, they're all getting it now. Yeah. I, this past week, or yes, it's it's the main main yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I saw her there, yeah. And so, I was in here earlier today, they were the same they had, so, but anyways, um, all right, okay, that's okay. for any of you. That's it. So, she didn't have anything for all business like that. That'll work. You got anything for us? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Very good. We, sure. Well, we have a few things to sign here, folks, and then we can get the fuck out of here. We're going to pass this big one to you, Ray. I'm very pleased with the conversation with the chicken. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I thought, um, thought that was good. Sam is great. I worked with him when I was at Castleton um, because for one of my criminal justice classes, I needed like an extra five or six hours of law enforcement right a long time. Mm -hmm. So I took like two days during vacation and rode along with Peter when he patrolled out here. So. And he was great. Well, it sounds like, um... I will say, riding along with State Trooper was a lot more fun, but. I bet. I don't know if anyone else wants to look at this, but I, I was looking at uh, what was left for um, 
PGL or, or time What's off. It, did you submit all Does anyone else want to look at that? Or, you know, you you all I'm just curious. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We don't have to sign this inside. Yes. Mm -hmm. so, like, I need a signature on all of them. Where are these little stickers? Here, it's just because it's only yeah. $700 or okay. somebody's going okay. to so so be okay. Thank you for asking. Well, where? No, you, it's all right. How do I get a staple in there? Either Tom, Ray, or I usually sign this. Oh. If, if it hasn't been signed up, you can just take it back. Yeah, I think you can just pay them all there. Oh, there's not much. I see. Oh, this is the person. At some point, you need to. Yeah. What is the talk of Mars for the other one? Is this a uh, uh, Yes. Uh, okay. Gallery for sure. Yeah. Let's thoughts on them. Uh, yeah. I mean, I know what they are. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think I, they're asking for a lot of Because we're going to put a lot of in the oh. Oh. Yeah. 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 I keep this on. They should have made the I keep it. Last one in your car. In my yes. In my truck. Just wait until wait till you're done. Wait till you're done. We're out of here. You're left. We left. We're done. Yeah. 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 Yeah.